Today I've got a really nice integral that comes from an MIT integration B. I think the year was around 2015. And what I like about this integral is it mixes the continuous and discrete. So integrals are inherently continuous objects, whereas this has the floor function, which turns this into a discrete operation. Okay, so let's see what we have. We'd like to calculate the integral from zero to one of dx over the floor of one minus the log base two of x. That's another thing that I think makes this interesting, the fact that we have a log base two of there. Although I think we could probably very easily generate this to the log base a, where a is really any positive number. I'll let you guys think about how you might do that and post it in the comments. Now before we start our real calculation, let's notice that this has a discontinuity at zero. The limit as x goes to zero from above of any logarithm is negative infinity. So that means to properly do this, I need to write this in terms of a limit. And that's exactly what I'll do. So I'll write this as the limit as, we'll call it t goes to zero from above of the integral from t to one of, well, it's the same integrand or the same function. So it's essentially one over the floor of one minus the log base two of x. But now we can really put anything in here for this t that we want as long as it approaches zero from above. So we might as well put something in here that interacts with the log base two well, just like we talked about before. And so I think that would be a power of two. So let's maybe write it as follows. So let's write this as the limit as, I'm gonna write this as n goes to infinity and then the integral of one over two to the n. Notice that encodes exactly what we have right here. T approaching zero from above, as n goes to infinity, one over two to the n approaches zero from above. Okay, so anyway, up to one of dx over um, the floor of one minus the log base two of x. Great. And now we're gonna split this up into a bunch of different integrals. And so what integrals will those be? Well, we're gonna start way down here at the bottom, one over two to the n and work all the way up to one. So in other words, we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of, I'm gonna write it like this at first, the integral from of one over two to the n to one over two to the n minus one plus the integral of one over two to the n minus one to one over two to the n minus two all the way down to the integral from one quarter to one half plus the integral from one half to one. So I think that encodes everything. But I can smush that all together into one object and that's gonna look like this. So I'll just bring my limit down as n goes to infinity and now I'll have the sum as little n goes from, let's see, it'll be zero up to capital N. So N equals zero is gonna be this thing right here. This will be one over two to the zero. And N equals capital N will be this term right here. And now that I look at it, I think I need this to be capital N minus one. And then this will be the integral from one over two to the N plus one to one over two to the N of our function. So dx over the floor of one minus log base two of x. But now the whole reason we split this up into pieces based off of powers of two is that so we could do some simplification. And that's exactly what we'll do over here. So let's maybe put this as a little bit of an observation or a side calculation. So if we have x, between one over two to the n plus one and one over two to the n, then that means that the log base two of x is between two things that are nice. Well, the log base two of x is an increasing function, so that means it will preserve our inequality. Okay, so let's put our log base two of x in the middle, and then we can pay, take the log base two of this, we'll get minus n. 
take the log base two of this, we'll get minus n plus one. Now let's maybe negate the whole thing. That'll swap all the inequalities. We'll have n is less than negative log base two of x, which is less than n plus one. And then we'll add one to everything here. And we'll have n plus one is less than one minus log base two of x, which is less than n plus two. But notice that puts one minus log base two of x between two consecutive integers. So if it's between two consecutive integers and we take its floor, we get the smaller integer. So in other words, we have the floor of one minus log base two of x is simply equal to n plus one in this case. So let's put a box around that and then maybe point out that that will be inserted right here. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us. So we'll still have this limit as capital N goes to infinity. We'll still have this sum as little n goes from zero to capital N minus one. And then we'll have the integral from, well, it's the same bounds of integration. So one over two n plus one to one over two n. But now we're integrating a constant because we can switch out this floor of one minus log base two of x with just one over n plus one. So we have one over n plus one dx. But if we're integrating a constant over, you know, like an interval, we simply get a constant times the length of that interval. Well, essentially it's just the area of a rectangle. So that's how you wanna think about that. Okay, so that means we can calculate this as one over n plus one times one over two to the n minus one over two to the n plus one. Again, it's the constant times the length of that interval. But it's pretty easy to calculate this difference here and we'll see that it's one over two to the n plus one. So that gives us the following object. We have the limit as capital N goes to infinity of the sum as little n goes from zero to capital N minus one of, let's see, one over N plus one times one half to the N plus one. I'm gonna write it like that, but look at that. That's the limit of some partial sums. And in fact, it's pretty easy to check that this series converges. Notice it's less than the series if we left out the one over N plus one, and that's simply a geometric series, which we know converges. So since this converges, we can rewrite this as an infinite sum. So we have this is the sum as little n goes from zero to infinity of, well, it's gonna be the same thing one over n plus one, and then one half to the n plus one. Okay, so let's bring that up. So this is where we just ended. So our integral was the following sum, but now I'm gonna take this sum and rewrite it so that it looks like, well, I'll call it a sum of zeroth integrals. So this is gonna be the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of one over n plus one, times x to the n plus one evaluated from zero to one half. That's what I mean by a zeroth integral. It's like just the evaluation. So clearly if we evaluate that at x equals zero, we get zero. Evaluating at x equals half, we retrieve our sum. But now I'm gonna apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to turn this zeroth integral to a first integral. I can do that by taking the derivative of this and then switch that whole thing out with an integral. So now we've got the sum, n goes from zero up to infinity. Well, taking the derivative of that, we actually get something nice, it's just x to the n. So we have the integral from zero up to one half of x to the n dx. But now by the dominated convergence theorem, we can switch the order of summation and integration to give us the integral from zero to one half of the sum as n goes from zero up to infinity of x to the n dx. But check it out. If x is between zero and one half, this is simply a geometric series where we are within the interval of convergence for a geometric series, so that's nice. And so we'll take the well-known value of this geometric series, which is one over one minus x. Great, so if there's like 
one series that you should remember from calculus two, it's a geometric series. If there's two, probably the Taylor expansion for e to the x. Okay, so that's gonna leave us with the integral from zero to half of one over one minus x dx. The antiderivative of that is quite easy. It is minus natural log of one minus x. We'll evaluate that from zero to one half. So evaluating it at one half, we get minus natural log of one half. Evaluating it at zero, we get natural log of one, which is zero. But now using logarithms, we can very simply reduce this to the natural log of two. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.